welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be discussing the second volume of the Black Books written by Carl Jung. And if you're not familiar with the Black Books, they consist of seven volumes written by Carl Jung between 1913 and 1932. And they were not really available to the general public until the end of 2020, when Sonu Shamdasani published an edited edition, including an introduction to the Black Books. And as Sonu Shamdasani also indicated at the back of the book sets, they were the most important unpublished work written by Carl Jung up until that point. Uh, in this video I will analyze the second volume and it's part of a larger series of seven videos in which I will try to analyze each volume uh, separately. So if you do not want to miss the other um, volumes then please also consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. So in the first volume of the Black Books, Sona Shamdasani indicated why Carl Jung set about an exploration of his own unconscious. According to the editor, during the initial stages of this exploration, Carl Jung actually thought that he was going insane. However, eventually Jung came to the realization that the images which were presented to him were in part fragments of a collective unconscious, as he called it. And as a result, instead of going insane, Carl Jung came to the realization that through this exploration of his own unconscious, he was actually revealing some of the most important truths inherent to humanity. And Carl Jung, he came to believe that uh, within this self-exploration, the key to the improvement of the psyche of the individual, but also of the whole of humanity could be found. He wrote, only the change in the attitude of the individual is the beginning of the change in the psychology of the nation. The great problems of humanity will never be solved through general laws, but always only through the renewal of the attitude of the individual. As a result, Jung came to realize, according to the editor, that the discovery of the self was one of the most important goals of life, a discovery which would not only have important benefits for the individual, but for the entire world as well. He wrote, The realization was that the self was the goal of the process of individuation. Progression was not linear, but involved the circumambulation of the self. And as we can see from the short uh, summary of the first volume, Carl Jung believed that everyone had this ability to discover these contents of the private unconscious as well as the collective unconscious and this exploration is however relatively difficult and in the second volume of the black books we can clearly see that Carl Jung himself was also struggling at the beginning of this exploration in this uh, video I will discuss the contents of the second volume in which we can read that Carl Jung really started this adventure full of excitement but that he was quickly facing some complicated challenges and that his journey did not go as planned, as planned, at least uh, initially. So Jung wrote, A huge task lay before me. I saw its enormous size and its value and meaning escaped me. I got into the dark and I groped along my path. That path led inward and downward. I believe that for Carl Jung this huge task was the discovery of his own soul, but also a documentation of this discovery and the challenge of sharing his discoveries with the world. In the beginning of the second volume of the Black Books, Carl Jung attempts to address his soul, indicating that I have been long separated from one another. He wrote, I have returned. Here I am again. I have shaken the dust of all the lands from my feet, and I have come to you again. I am with you, after long years of wandering. The one thing I have learned is that one must live this life. This life is the way, the long sought after way to the unfathomable, which we call divine. According to Carl Jung, all the other ways are false, indicating that the right way cannot be found in other people, other things or other religions, but only within the individual. Carl Jung himself indicated that he became separated from his soul because he did not see that the only right way could be found within himself. Therefore he wrote, I wandered for 11 years so long that I forgot that I possessed a soul that I could call my own. I belonged to men and things, I did not belong to myself. Carl Jung, he wandered like this until he started to pay attention to the images which he believed his soul presented to him in his dreams. He wondered how his soul managed to survive without him paying any attention to his soul for so long. However, he concluded that his soul was, despite his inattention, always present. He wrote, But you were not lost, nor was I. I went on the dusty way of the day. He went invisibly with me and guided me step by step putting the pieces together meaningfully and letting me see the whole and ultimate in each part. In 
As you can see, at the beginning of Volume 2 of the Black Books, Carl Jung was really eager to start his journey of self-exploration. However, he faced difficulties in understanding what the soul tried to communicate to him. And we can see, however, that the main theme at the beginning of the Black Books consists of the idea that the soul cannot be found in things outside of the self, such as other people or other objects. Instead, it must be found within. And when one fully submits oneself to the outer material world, one will be moving away from one's soul. And in order to return to one's soul, one must then return to him or herself. And I believe that this was also later formed inspiration for Carl Jung's idea of the spirit of the times and the spirit of the depths, which as I've spoken before in another video, which you can find uh, somewhere on your screen right now as well. For this present discussion, it is important to note that the soul speaks the language of the spirit of the depths. And the exploration of these depths actually terrified Jung initially. He wrote, What torture I must return to myself, to my smallest things. I want to be careful and say I had learned to see other things as large and had compared those with the things of my soul and had discovered that they were small. You forced me to see them as large, to make them large. Is that your aim? I follow, but it terrifies me. Because of this fear, Carl Jung had a hard time trusting his soul, which he actually found strange because he could easily trust other people but not his own soul. He wrote, Do I not trust every valiant man, every honorable woman, and not you, my soul? As a result of this paradox, Carl Jung decided to trust his soul completely. Therefore he wrote, Your hand lies heavy on me, but I am willing, I am willing. I have not rendered my best to love men and trust them, and should I not render this to you, my own soul? or rather the soul by which I am owned. Yes, I see how you guide me. I recognize your wise schooling. You convince me and I follow. After this decision to completely trust and follow his soul, a decision which Carl Jung explained in the second volume of the Black Books, Carl Jung begins his adventure into the depths of his own unconscious. And although it's a rather personal journey, it becomes clear from the beginning that it is very relatable and in this sense as well as as well we can understand clearly why Carl Jung became convinced of the existence of some sort of collective unconscious. And the beginnings of this adventure they do not go all that, that smoothly. And actually after reading the Red Book, which is another really interesting book of Carl Jung, um, one might get the impression that Carl Jung had a certain natural talent for the effortless exploration of the unconscious elements which he probably had anyways. Um, however, throughout volume 2 of the Black Books, the reader can observe that he had to overcome several challenges in the beginning. For example, Carl Jung came to the realization that his soul is actually a desert, and where he thought that he would find true meaning, he was actually met with emptiness at first. He wrote, My soul leads me into the desert, into the desert of my own self. I did not think that my soul is a desert, and yet it seems to be the case. The journey leads through hot sand, slowly waiting without a visible goal to hope for. In the previous uh, video, I've already discussed the integration of the unconscious and the process of individuation. And I've already indicated that if we turn our attention inwards, Jung observed that we might find out that the world of our soul is a desert. And it is then up to us, by directing our creative energies inwards, to fertilize the lands of the soul. Carl Jung wrote in the Red Book, if your creative force now turns to the place of the soul, you will see how your soul becomes green and how, it is, how its fields bears wonderful fruit. Besides rising, uh, rising above materialistic objects in the outer world, Carl Jung elaborated on other challenges which he faced during the initial stages of his exploration. Carl Jung believed that he should also rise above his own thoughts. He wrote, I was my thoughts after I was no longer events and other men but it was not myself. Confronted with my thoughts, I was still in my thoughts where I should even rise above my thoughts to my own self, the place of my soul. And this myself is a desert, unwatered and untended. And some of these thoughts which Jung believed he should rise above are the intentions which he set for himself before his journey. And as I indicated in the previous video as well, Carl Jung believed that we should be careful not to limit ourselves too much by setting intentions, a thought which he explored throughout volume 2 of the Black Books. He wrote, You are hard, my soul, but you are right. How little adept we are at living. We should grow like a tree that likewise does not know its law. 
We tie ourselves up with intentions, not mindful of the fact that intention is a limitation, yes, the exclusion of life. According to Jung, we cannot in advance know through our intentions from where true inspiration should come. He wrote, we believe that we can illuminate the darkness with an intention and in that way impasse the light. How like can we presume to want to know in advance from where the light will come to us? Carl Jung believed that the desert of his own soul which he had to cross and the fears which accompanied him were a necessary part of the journey. He wrote, but I am willing because the divine light shines bright for us in the great, greatest darkness. How shall I ever walk under your sun if I do not drink the nightly bitter draught of slumber to the least? Help me so that I do not choke on my own knowledge. However, despite his own encouragements, Carl Jung continued to struggle with his journey initially, which is an important theme throughout the second volume. For example, Carl Jung noted that many of the situations which he encountered, including the characters, were a lot less meaningful than he had hoped. Carl Jung even compared the stories which he experienced to novels which he hated since he was young. He wrote, Have I held the men of my time and their taste in such contempt that I must live in hell and write out the novels that I already loathed at the age of 15? However, close to the end of the second volume, in a dialogue with his soul, it is indi indicated that the stories which uh, Jung actually hated including age-old fairy tales, might be closer to the truth than expected at first. He wrote, Be reasonable, dear friend, and do not stumble now over the fabulous, since the fairy tale is the ancestress of the novel, and has even more universal validity than the most avidly read novel of your time. And you know that what has been up everyone's lips for millennia, though repeated endlessly, still comes nearest the ultimate human truth. So do not let the fabulous come between us. So, throughout the second volume of the Black Books, Carl Jung illustrated the challenges which he had to face during initial stages of the exploration of his own soul. And although he continually reassured, uh, reassured himself that he must trust his soul and the places to which his soul is taking him, he continued to remain doubtful because he is faced with emptiness and a lack of meaning. And the stories which his soul presents to him, they remain superficial and are not the ideas which he expected his soul would be presenting to him. However, as Jung indicated as well, his expectations and intentions might actually be what, what limit him too much. And in my opinion, throughout volume 2 of the Black Books, we can see Carl Jung make a clear move away from knowledge and reason, replaced by a direction towards the myth mystic, i.e. the spirit of the depths. And this tra transition was not easy to make for Carl Jung, and we can clearly see him struggle with the realization that such a transition is what is required of him. He wrote, But our knowledge, does our knowledge also not hold good for you? What is it going to be, if not knowledge? Where is security? Where is ground? Where is firm land? Where is light? In volume 3 we will see whether Carl Jung is able to find a new sort of security, ground, land and light. And if you do not want to miss this discussion of the third volume, then please also consider subscribing. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video as well.